Hello everyone, this is Gagarin News and our regular regular show called Crypto Not For Dummies. Hello. Why is proof of stake better than proof of work? In short, proof of stake gives more security at the same price. And here I suggest elaborate on this issue as Vitaly Buterin did in his article, when comparing POS and POW. Put them side by side and see how much it costs to attack a network per $1 per day in block rewards. With proof of work you can rent processing power, in other words, the graphics processing unit, GPU, quite cheaply, and so the cost of the attack on the network is the cost of renting the GPU to outrun the already existing miners or already existing GPUs, as proof of work involves GPU-based mining, which was actually the original way of mining and ASIC miners emerged later. ASIC as an acronym means essentially a processor designed for a specific application. For those who don't know, an ASIC miner is a box with a specially designed circuit chip, which is used for the sole purpose of mining, for the solution of the cryptographic task, which miners face, and that's all. This is what an ASIC miner is. In fact, the emergence of these ASIC miners is also the flip side of our industry. While graphics processors are affordable, the situation with ASIC miners is a little more complicated. That is how the market works. There are manufacturers of these ASIC processors and they are constantly developing new types of processors with higher processing power. By creating these processors, especially the new generation, they are very much increasing the complexity of mining in the network. And as we remember, the chance to mine a block in the network, let's say Bitcoin in general, in proof-of-work network is equal to the processing power of the entire network divided by the processing power of your worker, miner, node, etc. So, we join pools, because a pool of miners have more chances to mine a block than a single miner with one worker, one miner. So, the ASIC processor manufacturers make new processors, create them, produce them, and launch them on the market to mine at their facilities. They control a larger fraction of the processing power and, accordingly, get a larger percentage of the network rewards, which are paid to miners. Then they release these ASIC processes on the market, when they already have new processors. That is, when the profitability of these new ASIC processors drops, they debut them to the market, where they are bought up by hundreds of CIS miners. To sum up our comparison of POS and POW algorithms in terms of how much it costs to attack a network per $1 per day in block rewards, we should understand that for every $1 of block rewards, miners have to spend about $1 in costs. If their expenses are higher, miners will drop out. And if their expenses are lower, they have a chance to gain high profits. Thus, attacking the network requires temporary costs of more than $1 per day, and only for a few hours. So, the total cost of the attack would be approximately 26 cents, provided that the attack lasts about 6 hours. Potentially, the attack may be reduced to zero as the attackers get a block reward. With ASIC-based proof-of-work, things look a little different. An ASIC is a capital expense. So, when you buy an ASIC you expect it to be useful for about 2 years until it wears down or becomes obsolete. Obsolescence means that its profitability drops to some critical values. In addition, if the blockchain community undergoes a 51% attack, the community will certainly respond to the attack and change the POW algorithm, and your ASIC will lose its value. On average, mining is about one-third of ongoing costs and about two-thirds of capital costs. Hence, one dollar of reward per day requires the miner to spend approximately 33 cents, approximately 33%, on electricity and maintenance, and 67% of the capital cost will be spent on your ASIC. Assuming that the ASIC service life is approximately two years, we can determine that the total cost of the attack will be approximately 486 US dollars and 67 cents plus 8 cents for electricity and maintenance. The total cost would be approximately 486 to 487 dollars. However, it is worth noting that ASIC ensures a higher level of security due to their higher cost and higher level of centralization. But since the barriers to entry are higher, this respectively acts as a deterrent. What is proof of stake? Proof of stake consists mostly of capital costs and staked coins. The only operating costs are the cost of running a node. The question is how much capital are you willing to lock up to get $1 reward per day? With POW and ASIC processors, the value of your staked coins doesn't depreciate. When you are done with staking you will get your coins back, which you can immediately sell after a short lockup. Consequently, in the case of proof of stake, participants should be willing to incur much higher capital costs for the same amount of reward. Let's assume that a 15% return in rewards is enough to motivate people to stake. Let me remind you that 15% is the expected ETH 2.0 rate of return. Then $1 of reward per day will attract almost 6.667 years deposit return, or $2,433. You should realize that the cost of electricity and equipment will be much lower. 
That is, a powerful supercomputer, not a superloaded network in the POW, but just one powerful computer, which will cost you $100 per day for electricity, can successfully cope with the load and the task assigned to it. But conservatively, we can say that these ongoing costs are about 10% of the total cost of staking. This means that we get 90 cents from $1 reward per day, which ultimately corresponds to the capital cost. So, we just need to reduce the above figure by about 10%. The approximate cost of attack in proof of stake would be 90 cents per day multiplied by 6,667 years and that's $2,189. So now compare, the POW has the minimum value, the ASIC offers much higher value and POS, almost $2,200. These costs are expected to go even higher in the long run as staking becomes more efficient and people get used to lower rates of return, lower levels of return in a more stable system, but with less risk and that figure can eventually grow to $10,000 and more. Please note that the only cost of such a high level of security is the comfort and convenience of being able to move your coins at will while they are staked. The fact that the community knows that these coins are locked up may result in the coin price increase, so the total amount of money in the community, which is ready to make investments etc., will remain the same. Given that the cost of maintaining consensus in POW is the real cost of the electricity we consume and spend in enormous amounts, the question here is higher security or lower costs. There are two ways to use this 5 to 20x gain in security against cost. One is to leave the same block reward, but increase security. The other is to significantly reduce the block reward, losing the consensus mechanism, and keep the same level of security. It all comes down to a question of more security or less expenses. Please note that there are two ways to leverage this 5 to 20x security gain for cost. One is to leave the block reward on the same level, but increase security. The other is to significantly reduce the block reward, losing the consensus mechanism, and keep the same level of security. Either way is fine. Vitaly Buterin personally goes more for the second option described above. You should understand that a successful attack in POS is much less damaging than in POW. That is, an attack in POS is much easier to recover from than from a 51% attack in POW. It's worth noting that with a 51% attack in POW, it's partially true for POS as well. You don't know which transactions are genuine and which are not. You lose control over your blockchain for a while and then when it is restored you cannot roll back, you do not know which transactions are genuine and which are not. Consequently, it creates grounds for fork, precedents arise and it must be somehow solved. This will likely result in a blockchain fork, part of your community will separate and will do their own things. Hello. What is more decentralized? Poser POW. This is also a great question. GPU-based POW is not that hard to get. As we said earlier today, renting GPUs is not that difficult. You pay for the rental time. You don't have to incur any capital costs like you would if you bought an ASIC miner. For example, GPU-based mining largely fails on the attack protection criterion that we mentioned today. ASIC-based mining, on the other hand, requires a capital investment of millions of dollars and if you buy an ASIC from others, the production company usually gets the best part of the deal. It's also the right answer to the common concern that POS makes the rich become richer. ASIC also makes the rich become richer. And we really need to look at this issue a little bit differently, that is, at least how easily we can recover from a 51% attack. This is really no joke, because such an attack can put the protocols on the verge of its existence. That is, you will lose everything you have completely or partially. But POS requires less minimum to stake than buying an ASIC miner, which makes it more affordable to average people. In addition, POS is more censorship resistant. GPU mining and ASIC mining are both very easy to detect. How can the government detect it? They may check the electricity consumption, determine places with high or increased electricity consumption and just come to there, and you can physically affect your decentralized network. On the other hand, you can do POS staking on a regular laptop or even using a VPN. They are impossible to compare in terms of technical thresholds of entry. And now a word or two in defense of POW. What are the possible advantages of POW? There are two main advantages. The first is that POS is more of a closed system, which leads to higher wealth concentration in the hands of existing rich people. With POS, if you have some coins you can stake them and get more of these coins. With POW, you can always earn more coins, but you always need some external resource for that, primarily financial. Consequently, one may argue that in the long run, coin distribution with POS risks becoming more and more centralized and concentrated. And the main answer to this is that in POS, rewards in general, and hence, validators' income, will be quite low. In ETH 2.0, validators' revenues are expected to be about 0.5 to 2% of the total ETH supply. And the more validators stake, the lower interest rates they get. 
Hence, it will take more than a century to double the concentration level of these coins in staking and at such slow time scales other pressures, such as people intending to spend their money, donate to charity or distribute among their children, will probably prevail. And the last argument is that POS requires weak subjectivity in contrast to POW. This was our regular regular show called Crypto Not For Dummies. I am Dr. Smart Contract. Don't forget about the contest. Subscribe. Hit the thumbs up and hit the notification bell. See you soon, guys.